So document types, uh, you can set up your custom document types by going here to settings and document types. Here you can see that we already have a couple of document types set up. The way in which you can use these document types are by basically going anywhere here and right clicking. And let's say you wanted to add a document type of page. You can see that we have a few document types set up. The great thing with document types is when maybe someone that's not really in the IT industry and you don't want them to be uh, setting up a bunch of stuff for the pages that they are supposed to create, you can predefine the documents so that out of the box they have something to work with. For example, if they would, let's say, create this content page, that would, that's a document type here, they would already have the pre-configured controller. Another useful thing is if you have some kind of pages which will out of the box always have the same structure you can define a document type here and then use it for new pages of that type so first to set up a document type let's make a new uh, action within our controller if we just copy this we can reuse this so test uh, document type action will be the name of the method. Uh, we will not need the translator. We will also not need basically anything within the method. Now, as you can see, we have the default action, which means that within the templates folder, we will need to create a template within uh, the default folder with the name of test underscore document underscore type. So let's, uh, let's do that. Actually, we can see what the others have. So let's just copy the default and call it accordingly. So we said test underscore document underscore type. Click enter. And now we already have this. And let's add some kind of PIM core imports or headers so that we already have that within the document when we create it so that you know that you use the correct one. Uh, let's go to the PIM core documentation, go to documents and here you have editables. Now let's say that for our editable, we would need some kind of input. Here we have an input, there we go, in the H2. So we're gonna have an input for basically our headline. We can leave the name as is. And let's say that this document will also have uh, uh, some kind of image, which we can drag and drop. We're just gonna quickly take this um, out, of the, out of the documentation. And let's say that this document is used uh, for something that requires a header and an image, and it's always going to be structured like so. Also, one quick thing to mention is here you can also put area blocks, which means that you can define many area blocks that can be put into this template, as they did, for example, for the content page where you have a lot of area blocks, maybe on one of these pages they're using a content page. Here you can see these are area blocks, so you can basically take something and drag and drop it and add your custom heading, uh, summary, uh, whatever you can do that in uh, document types, which is pretty cool. But anyway, uh, save this, make sure you saved the default controller as well. Let's go back to our document types and click on add. Here we can see that a new document type was created. So let's call it test document document type. Uh, we're not going to put it in any sort of group. And here we can choose the action that we created. It's uh, within the default controller and it's called test document action. So let's just, let's just find it. Where is it? Okay. I just noticed that uh, my controller didn't load. So we're going to go back to document types, click on this and just go down to the default controller. And now our test document type action is here. Uh, the type of document is the page. 
Here you can actually select a, another template instead of using uh, this one, but we're going to keep on using this one. And you can also always uh, return a rendered template here. You don't necessarily have to uh, follow the naming convention that I just did by, you know, going to the default uh, folder because the controller was named default and then naming uh, the twig template uh, according to the method. So let's go back here. We're going to leave the priority as is and click on update. So let's go here and right click, add new document, call it test two since we already have a test uh, created. And now when the document opens, you can see that we can type in the headline and we can also drag and drop an image uh, here if we have one. Let's see. Uh, go to the front end and see what's wrong. Oh, yeah, made a mistake. Here you can see that when I copied the image, it wanted to use the content images thumbnail as the processor. But however, if we go here to thumbnails and image, we can see that we don't have that actual thumbnail name here. So I can copy this one and go back here. This is not uh, necessary. You can actually delete this. You can delete the width and the height. I'm just going to leave it uh, like so and go back to our test page. And now if we open it up, we can see that we have our headline and now our thumbnail has loaded correctly. Hope the video helped you. And if you want to learn more about PIMCore, you can check out my Udemy course called Learning PIMCore from Zero to Hero, where I will show you all of the steps from creating a project, buying and setting up a server, as well as deploying your project. Hope to see you there.